everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and today we are going to over dye a very saturated skein of yarn. This is Tough Puff Eggplant. This yarn is 100% wool. Uh, I believe it's a combination of a bunch of different wools. And with only 44 yards per 100 grams, it is a super bulky weight. I've dyed this yarn base a few times in the past, but today I want to do something that I haven't done for a while. And we are gonna dye this in its commercially wound ball of yarn. There are many times I like to do a technique called cake dyeing, where I will wind yarn into a yarn cake and then dye that. And you get an asymmetric colorway because most of the dye can access the outside of the yarn and less can get into the center. And so in the center, you'll have more of the original color left behind. And on the outside, you'll have less. Plus you can get some really cool uh, bombling and stuff from where the yarn crosses over itself. And if you're buying yarn to over dye it, you can do this kind of technique starting with the commercially wound, machine wound ball of yarn versus winding it yourself. And well, we'll see what kind of effects we get here today. But with our project today, we have sort of a secondary experiment. Uh, and that is we're starting with a very saturated color here. This eggplant purple is a beautiful deep purple versus a bright, I mean, I guess it has a little brightness to it. So whatever we over dye it with will like, should be a darker color. And so I'm planning to use, I'm debating between like a black or a navy uh, for our project here today. And so hopefully then we'll get dark with pops of purple in it. And I think that'll be gorgeous. And well, I'm really excited to see where it goes. And so if you want to learn more about the yarn or other tools and equipment that I'm using in today's video, I will have links and affiliate links down in the video description. And I may earn a commission if you make purchases through any of my affiliate links. And now let's go prepare our dye bath. I put on my deluxe rubber respirator mask, safety glasses, and gloves, and measured out 0.5 grams of Dharma's True Black Acid Dye. I considered using Midnight Blue because I have a stock of that already, but given that that blue is already purplish in nature, I was afraid that it might be a little too subtle and a black should hopefully give us a really nice contrast with the purple we have. Even if the color only strikes to a small area of the yarn overall, we should have something that is asymmetric and beautiful and would make a really fun, chunky hat. I dissolved the dye with some hot tap water, not worrying about the final volume because I'm planning to add 100% of this to our dye bath. I have 16 cups of water in this eight quart dye pot that's dedicated for dyeing yarn. It's never used for any food prep. And we're heating it up. And to this, I wanna add, let's do six tablespoons of white vinegar. Four, five, six. Normally I might start with a ratio with my personal tap water of two cups, sorry, of two tablespoons of white vinegar per eight cups of water, but Given that this yarn is not super wash and is in ball form, more acid isn't a bad thing. Of course, we could always add the yarn and then add acid after. Uh, there are many different ways you could go ahead and set this up. But let me go rinse out the cup. In case it wasn't obvious, that was the eight gram, eight grams, oh my goodness, the 0 0.5 grams of dye we had just measured. Now the dye bath is not warm yet, which is why I can stir it with a plastic spoon. Uh, otherwise, don't do that. <laughs> if you don't want things to melt. And so now I'm gonna go ahead and bring this to a boil because then I can reduce the heat uh, right before we add our yarn, which is still dry. Uh, I figured that will give us a good chance of getting some dye to go in towards the center, but anyway. Uh, I'll see you in a little bit. We've got some movement on the surface. I'm gonna reduce the heat to low. Wait for some of the steam to calm down. <laughs> Just so that way we can see better. And then, well, guess we're gonna take our ball of yarn and pop her on. And I'm sitting here curious if we're gonna float or if we're gonna start to sink. Uh, 
Okay, if you look at the bottom, we are sinking in maybe a little bit. It might be very slow. Let me grab something. Yeah, cause some yarn will just start sinking in. Other yarn might need a little bit of help. I think it depends on, yeah, especially cause watch, I push this down and then it comes straight back up. This is gonna need some help. Uh, I think certain yarn, especially non-superwash yarn that maybe doesn't have very much lanolin in it, can take a lot longer to get saturated, uh, which means that that can help us get more uneven color coverage sometimes and can be fun. But I think we've also got, well, clearly you can see those bubbles coming out, a lot of air in here as well which is also causing her to float. All right. We still have some yarn that's above the surface here, but most of it is now beneath the surface. So that wasn't so bad. But now we're really gonna just need to wait to let some of these colors strike and yeah, we'll, we'll see what we get. And if I need to at some point, I can come in with another skein of yarn uh, to help soak up some of that dye that we have on the exterior. But for now, I'm gonna set a timer for 30 minutes and then we'll see where we are when the timer goes off. I thought I was gonna do a yarn mop, but the pot is almost like just a tiny bit of purplish color. Almost all of the color is in our yarn. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna add, let's add some more, three, four, five, five to six tablespoons of white vinegar. And I'm gonna heat this for 30 more minutes. There may still be some color in the dye bath and we're not gonna worry about that, but we're gonna keep things at this low, just below a boil temperature for that other 30 minutes, and then we'll see if things are still looking the same, if they look a little more clear, or what. All right, it has been 30 minutes, and so I'm gonna turn off the heat, and, ooh, I see some purple in there. I see some purple in there still, that makes me so excited. And I'm very excited that the water appears to be fairly clear. So, we're gonna let this cool off, and then we'll come and take a closer look at it. But I am so excited and it's so hard. Like, I don't wanna felt anything. I mean, I'm seeing lots of black. So who knows? Who knows if we'll have a gradient? But certainly we'll have something tonal because we see black and purple. So, oh, but I can't wait to see. Patience, Rebecca, patience. The yarn is cool and if I peer in, I certainly see more purple and more black, but I'm curious how much of a gradient it is or what. But let's give it a bit of a wash. Um, I will probably wash it again after uh, it has dried and we've unraveled it. I really don't want to felt it, but I do want to rinse it out a little bit. I'm not using soap now. This is just like a little test for some bleeding. Uh, goodness, normally I would put it, try to put this through my spin dryer, but I don't really have anything to counterbalance it. So I'm just gonna squeeze it and we're gonna hang this up to dry because when I am winding this yarn back onto a nitty knotty to unravel the ball, I don't want to like pull it too much or introduce felting, felting. We're in a much more vulnerable state right now with it in the ball. So I'll see you in a couple days. The outside of this yarn ball is fairly dry. Ooh, look at some of that original color. Ah! But the inside still feels damp. However, I am gonna wind this by hand onto a Knitty Knotty so we can get a bit of a feel for the gradient if there is one, or at least the color progression. We actually did get a gradient, I'm so excited. There is some modeling and a little bit of some reverse speckling in here because of the resist of the way the ball was wound. So like in here, you can see that reverse speckling, but then we have little hints of the black going down all the way the other end as well. And so this is a fairly balanced gradient actually, uh, cause we've got like the blacks going into the purple. I 
don't know if I'm going to keep this skein for myself, but I'm going to have to, uh, I might need to keep it or do something again. I'm forgetting the total number of grams that I had here, but I'm very excited and would love to see how this works up. The only reason why I put the skein on the Nitty Naughty like this, which is not a very Nitty naughty -able type of way, was so that way um, we could look at the color progression because once I turn it back into a skein uh, and we go wash it, uh, you won't be able to feel that gradient as cleanly. I mean, you can still tell that it's there, but it's harder to say. Uh, that it is as asymmetric. But so let's go wash this. With any cake dyeing or asymmetric yarn dyeing, I usually wash it at the end. Sometimes that is off camera though, because it just depends on uh, the way that the filming goes. But I'm washing it now here, uh, mainly because, well, it was damp and so I may as well wash it, right? But I am curious to see with the addition of soap, if we'll see any color come out. Because in theory, we could get some bleeding from that purple as well. However, we are in luck. No bleeding. That's great. I'm now gonna rinse out the soap, uh, put this yarn through my thin dryer, and hang it up to dry for real, so we can have some final conclusions. I washed it and it's dry, and we are not felted. Woohoo! I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and compared to other types of cake dyeing, this is one that is super easy for you to replicate at home because you can buy the same commercial bound ball of yarn that I did. And so that is a closer recreation because if you're winding your own yarn cake or ball of yarn, you can wind it tighter or looser and that can affect your results. So I challenge you to try this yourself and let me know how it turns out please subscribe and turn on notifications so you never miss a new video. I post at least twice a week and we do live streams and other fun things and so you really don't want to miss any of it. But if you would like to support this content on another level, you can join to become a channel member. All channel members get to use the custom Chemnitz emotes in live stream chats and in the comment section. Plus you get a badge next to your name. And at the postdoc level, you also get early access to the Dipot PS series plus a behind the scenes live stream every month. Now those postdoc level, those rewards overlap with some of the rewards I have over on Patreon. But if you click on the join button on YouTube, then you should have a little video for me where I will talk about all of it. But boy, oh boy, do I love a good, super bulky single ply yarn. Oh, and these are my favorite colors. <laughs> Oh my goodness, I love this. And again, it's nice to know how easy this would be for me to replicate uh, with the conditions and to get something very, very similar. And so you never know, you might just find this game over in the Chemist Creations Etsy shop. That is if I didn't keep this one for myself. Thank you so much for watching.